in the beginning of this drawing, I am thinking about the paper, similarly to the way that we have drawn drapery um, prior to this, looking for major shapes and patterns of light and shadow and hard and soft edges. Um, you want to make sure your tools are sharp. And in the beginning of the drawing, cover large areas of value with medium tone and then work into your dark areas before you address your half tones. So here I'm laying down just a medium value on this bottom plane of the piece of paper or the paper bag. So you want to think about broad shadow masses um, and try not to let it become spotty. So if your shadows start to get spotty, go back and reorganize them by applying broad areas of lighter value first, then work into those darker, more dramatic shadows. Remember not to try to add too much detail in the beginning of your drawing. You have to lay the foundation first, so make sure you look for the edges of planes and edges of shapes and edges of folds. You want to vary your use of your drawing tools, so vary the hardness of your pencil according to the depth of shadow that you want to achieve. So in lighter areas, you'll want to go with a lighter or a harder pencil. And make sure you're using a cover sheet to protect your drawing from your hand uh, resting on the paper if that is an issue for you. That tends to be more of an issue for lefties than for righties. So you want to work into those dark areas, into those shadows, to create a sense of contrast and depth of space, especially here where I'm looking at the interior of the paper bag. I want to make sure that I set that back as a deep space, so I'm going to use a softer pencil to create that darker shadow against the lighter shadow of the top plane of the bag. And I want to keep that edge really clean and really sharp. Find those darkest darks, but within that dark area I'm still trying to see subtleties and shifts of value within that dark area. And as planes change direction, I want to use my marks, my hatching and cross hatching, to indicate those changes in planes. Now, here in shading this mug, the texture, the surface of this mug, is much smoother than the crinkly nature of the paper bag. So I want to show that that ceramic mug is hard and smooth and white. So I want to use lighter shadows, lighter values. So I'm using a, a hard pencil, very soft pressure to achieve these values. So to make these areas darker, I'm going to go back over um, the, those values, but I'm not using a really hard pressure. I'm using density of mark to get those shadows just a little bit darker. But I want to be aware that the surface of that mug is very different from the surface of the paper bag. The interior of that mug is very, very smooth. So 
So I'm using a little bit of um, a dark contour on the edge of this mug because it is white and I want to maintain the whiteness of the surface of the mug. So I'm going to let that contour be a little bit stronger. So I'm working back on this underplane of the paper bag here, making it slightly darker. So I'm going to let these uh, areas of darker value get darker gradually. So I'm not going for um, big, huge areas of super dark in the beginning. Now in the tight creases and tight folds of the paper bag, you're going to see more contrast. I want to show the, the uh, dramatic nature of these very tight folds and very deep spaces. The way to achieve that is more contrast. One of the most dramatic areas in the drawing is that very sharp uh, shadow underneath the opening of the paper bag and then again over to the left where here I am working on that crease at the bottom of that fold. So as I'm working on uh, starting to work on the squirrel which is made of pine straw so it's fairly sharp and stalky Right now I'm just laying in um, the major shadow values, trying to get the form of this squirrel before I come back with more detailed texture. But at the same time, I still want to consider what kind of mark is best going to describe how that squirrel feels when you touch him. Um, the spiky nature of the pine straw needles that make up his fur. So I want to think about that as I am initially laying in these first values. And then for continuity's sake, I want to continue the drawing of the bag behind the squirrel's tail so that the squirrel doesn't become the end of the drawing. That that paper bag extends behind the squirrel. And then I'm going to start here with really adding in some of that texture. Very strong parallel lines. I'm using a soft pencil to get some darker texture where the pine straw is bunched together to create the, the fur of the squirrel. And don't be afraid to let those marks sort of stand on their own. Um, not everything has to be perfect. Sometimes the more expressive it is, the better. And to make that squirrel stand out, I'm pushing the value of that bag back just a little bit more so that the squirrel, the tail of the squirrel comes forward in front of that bag. I'm just going to build this texture. And I want to keep looking over the whole drawing as I get closer and closer to completion. I want to keep looking and comparing the values from one object to the other, uh, from one shape to the other, making sure that I am um, maintaining the organization of the drawing. I 
I'm going to get a little more detail now in the, those subtle planes on the underside of that fold. Again, looking for the contrast in that deep space of the paper bag. And I want to be aware that there are going to be very subtle reflected lights inside that paper bag. They won't be very light at all, but there is some variety and value within the space of that paper bag. Remember, a paper bag is translucent. It's not transparent. Um, but some light can get through. So there'll be a little bit of light within that very, very dark area of the interior of the paper bag. You want to make sure you clean up areas of the drawing that need to be cleaned up after a couple of hours of working on it. And your eraser, the Mono Zero eraser, is as valuable a drawing tool in some ways as some of your pencils are. You can use it to clean up edges, to create highlights, to create mark making, by pulling graphite off of the page as well as putting it down. Just strengthening a couple of contours here. Cleaning up those edges of the paper bag. Creating a little more contrast. That front fold, the spine of that fold is very important. A little more texture on the back of the squirrel, a little more value as well to give him some form, not just surface decoration, but using the value to create the volume and form of that figurine. Now at this point, as you're getting close to completion, you want to make sure that you're looking at the whole drawing, not just one little part of it, but considering the whole in terms of uh, contour, figure to ground, values, making sure there's nothing else you need to address at this point. Clean up where it needs to be cleaned up. 